What are some basic steps you can take if you're interested in being a nurse business owner? Let's take a deep dive into my recommendations for how to become a nurse entrepreneur right here on episode 316 of The Nurse Keith Show. Hey there, this is Nurse Keith. This podcast is always about you, your personal and professional development, your career, and the healthcare system as a whole. And I'm here to share education, ideas, diatribes, and most often informative interviews with some of the most inspiring people from the worlds of healthcare, nursing, entrepreneurship, medicine, and beyond. And on this episode, it's just little old me and you. I love having you along for the ride, and I thank you from the bottom of my nurse podcaster's heart for being a part of the growing Nurse Keith Nation. And here's a very, very special request. If you find value in this podcast, please consider becoming a valued patron over at patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash Nurse Keith. You know... Creating more than 300 episodes incurs many costs, as you can imagine, and your support means so much. Right now in 2021, I'm asking for 100 regular listeners of The Nurse Keith Show, that's you, to pledge $2 per month for a year. It's less than buying me a cup of coffee every month, and you can rest assured that the show contains no caffeine, no sugar, and no empty calories, just lots of audio awesomeness for you. You can always pledge more and get some really awesome stuff in return from me, but $2 would also be super. So head over to patreon.com forward slash Nurse Keith to sign up and show your support for the Nurse Keith Show. Would you do that for me? And did you know that Nurse Keith Coaching is your destination for all things related to your career? That's right. I've completed hundreds of expert holistic coaching sessions with nurses and healthcare professionals like you from around the world. And if you'd like to explore career coaching and what it can offer you, email me at keith at nursekeith.com to schedule a complimentary chat. And if you mention the show, you can get 10% off your first coaching package. The show notes for this episode will be at nursekeith.com forward slash the word episode and the number 316. Now, you know, in the course of my coaching, lots and lots of nurses come to me because they need a change. They need to do something different. They want to maybe have a little something special on the side, or they actually really want to go for it and start their own business. And as a nurse entrepreneur for more than a decade, I've been around this block a bunch of times and I've seen and experienced the roller coaster that this entrepreneurial path can be. And I'm not specifically a business coach. My career coaching practice and experience does lend itself to helping people with some of the rudiments of launching a business and also maintaining a business. So when nurses come to me and this is what they want, we go deep and we talk about it. Because if you have the entrepreneurial itch, there's probably something out there that you really need to do or really want to do. And it might be part of your life's fulfillment to start your own business. So what does a business actually do? And before I get to my tips for launching your nurse-run business, I want to talk about what a business actually does out there in the world. And from a blog post of mine, I wrote this particular quote that I'm going to read right here. A business identifies a pain point, problem, or need, and then delivers a product or service to solve that problem to a customer who is willing to pay for that solution. And you know what? Things haven't changed since the days of people living in caves. Now, when people lived in caves, they didn't have money. They bartered things. And some of us barter here and there. I still do sometimes, but mostly we exchange money. But things really haven't changed. Let's say you have a cave person who knows how to tan a hide and make a nice warm cloak or blanket for someone to keep themselves warm in the cold weather. Another person knows how to take bones and rocks and things and make weapons and utensils and tools. Well, one person has a problem. He's cold and he really needs that tanned hide. 
the other person, she has a problem because she needs a tool to be able to do the chores that she needs to do for her family's survival. So each one solves a problem for the other and they barter their their wares in exchange for what the other person can provide them. So when money came along, barter wasn't any wasn't necessary any longer, but we still do the same thing. We have to solve a problem for someone. So as a nursepreneur or nurse entrepreneur, you probably aren't tanning hides, so you could be actually, but maybe you have an idea for a product that can really solve a problem for a particular group of people. Or maybe you have a service like coaching or Reiki or resume editing or something that you feel would be very efficacious and you think there's people out there who would pay you to do that thing. So coming up with a product is much more complex to a large extent than coming up with a a service because a product means you have to actually go through the process of, you know, getting a um, patent. If you if it's something brand new that's never happened before, never been in the world before, you have to design it, get prototypes. Creating a product is very, very complicated. Creating a service like coaching or Reiki or maybe advising elders on their health care or their options for their older years when they need to go in assisted living, not such a heavy lift because you don't have to create something from scratch that's actually a physical product. Now, on the last episode, number 315, I interviewed my friend Brian Mojica, who lives up in Massachusetts near where I used to live. And Brian saw the need for a product that would allow people who wear catheter bags to have freedom of movement and much less skin irritation from, you know, those straps and the plastic and the vinyl and the latex and everything. So he invented something called Cathware. And I will have a link in the show notes to the interview with Brian and to Cathware.com because he has been so incredibly successful. His product's even being sold in Walmart now. So he actually understands how to bring a product to market and wrote a book about the process called Let It Flow little pun there for, because he works on urinary catheter issues. (laughs) So it's a great exemplification of how someone identified an actual problem and created a real live physical product that he brought to market and is wildly successful. Now, you may have a very much more simple idea, like something I mentioned a few minutes ago, like say, advising elders and their adult children on the options for their later years and what they can do to manage their health, their health care, and their living situation. That will need, of course, a website and all those types of things. So, of course, there's lots of things. There's lots of stuff to create. And whatever you do, these next 10 steps I'm going to offer, while they're not the be-all and end-all, These will help guide you in a particular direction and help you get off the ground. So here we go. Tip number one is to come up with an idea. And it usually begins with a story or a concept or a perception of yours. Like Brian Mojica developed the Cathware product and solved a problem for a group of people. Like I mentioned, you might want to work with seniors and their adult children. So identify your idea. Ascertain if there's a compelling story behind the idea that you can tell people, an elevator pitch, something that really expresses why this product is special or this service is special. And then continue to solidify and sharpen that idea and story so that you actually begin to come up with the language that expresses the kernel of what you do and what this product or service is and why it's valuable. Tip number two is to do your research. I'm sure Brian did tons of research on how to patent something, how to um, bring a prototype to market, well, actually how to create a prototype and then bring the actual product to market. I'm sure he experienced all sorts of stuff along the way. So a great product is wonderful 
if there's a target audience who actually wants to pay for it and you can create it at a price point that works for them and works for you. So it might be developing a prototype, finding the manufacturer, looking around your particular geographic area and seeing, are there seniors in this area who need my help? Maybe I need to do a survey. Maybe I need to create a focus group, which is a little hard during a pandemic, but it can be done in various electronic ways. And maybe you need to talk to other people around the country or the world who do something similar so you can do your due diligence, do your research, dig deep, and figure out exactly who can help you, mentor you, guide you, coach you, or provide assistance or support, moral or material, to get you to the next step of actually moving towards launching your business. So doing your research of the market, the niche, the product or service, people who do that thing, the supports you need is essential. Tip number three, identify that target market or niche. Your research is going to hopefully reveal to you who your target market or niche is. If it's elders over the age of 80 and their adult children, that's a pretty big niche, but that might actually work for you or you might need to narrow it a little bit. You're not quite sure yet because you, you need to continue to do your research. The general idea is usually that the riches are in the niches. So you need to make sure that the group of people you're targeting has the wherewithal, the interest, and the, the money, basically, to be crass, to pay you for whatever you are bringing to bear. So finding your niche, who is your target audience? For me, the niche I've identified for my career coaching services is nurses, and that's an enormous niche. And I could narrow it down, but I haven't currently found or in the past have found the need to narrow it, though I may need to at a certain point. There are emerging career coaches out there who work with novice nurses. There are some who work specifically with advanced practice nurses. So I may eventually, as the more and more nurse career coaches come out of the woodwork and they are coming out of the woodwork, let me tell you, and it's wonderful. Everyone needs that support. I may need to choose a very, very specific narrow niche and really dig deep into it. So you watch the market, you see who's coming to you, you see who's interested in your idea. And again, doing that research tip number two will help you do the research on tip number three, which is who are your people? Who are the folks you want to sell to? Who wants what you have? Who will pay for what you have, what you're, on, what you're offering? And that is a really big step towards identifying how you're going to move forward. Tip number four builds on tip number two, which is seeking support in setting up your business. I'm on the board of the National Nurses and Business Association. There'll be a link in the show notes. And I cannot recommend that organization and its president, Michelle Pod Leslie, enough. It's a community of like-minded nurse entrepreneurs. The annual flagship conference is awesome. It's often in Vegas, but we may be moving it to different places in the future. Who knows? And any business-minded nurse definitely would be prudent to attend the conference. That conference is really my annual happy place. I love going to that conference. It's my community and my family. And if you want to come, please join me. It is a really a great time. And it's a great organization to belong to year round. And if you need help in terms of creating a small business in your local area, go to score.org, S-C-O-R-E.org, and SCORE will pair you with a mentor who's usually a retired business person or a uh, uh, entrepreneur who volunteers their time and they will help you figure out, do I want an LLC? Do I want an S Corp, a J Corp? Do I want to form a nonprofit? How do I do this thing? These are folks whose brains you can pick and you can also just reach out to other nurse and non-nurse business owners like me and others and say, hey, can I do a little informational interview with you and kind of hear what you have to say about what it's like to have a business mistakes you made and how can I learn from you? 
So look for the people who can help you. There are lots of programs and books and podcasts and articles and blog posts out there. So go forth and research. Find the people who can help you most. So we're going to take a quick break and come back for tips six through 10. So just hang tight for a little break and we will be back with the second half of episode 316 of The Nurse Keith Show. So now we're going to take a pause for the cause for just a moment. Please consider becoming a patron of The Nurse Keith Show, just like other awesome listeners who value the show so much that they want to give just a little bit each month to support the work we're doing here. When you pledge, you not only get the satisfaction of helping produce and support The Nurse Keith Show, you also get some pretty cool premiums and gifts from yours truly. Just head over to patreon.com forward slash Nurse Keith to read all about it. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Nurse Keith. And if you know someone who could benefit from career coaching with me, please consider referring them. And if they become a paying client, you'll receive credit for an hour of coaching with me. And there's no expiration date on that credit. So you can keep it in your back pocket until you need it most. And remember that you can refer as many people as you like and continue to earn those coaching credits. What an incredible deal. And please head over to nursekeith.com and sign up for my newsletter, which comes out regularly and brings you supportive messages, updates from my blog and my podcast, resources, and all sorts of other stuff. Remember, nursekeith.com, sign up for that newsletter, and you'll also get a free download from me as my gift to you. Anyway, those are my sincere asks today. So now, Let's dig back into today's topic without further ado. And we're back. Thanks for hanging out here in episode 316 of the Nurse Keith Show. It's a joy to have you here. The show notes will be at nursekeith.com forward slash the word episode and the number 316. Before the break, I was talking about my five of the 10 tips for how to begin the process of considering and figuring out how to launch a nurse-centric business as a nurse entrepreneur and business owner. I referenced Brian Mojica from just the last episode, number 315. And I want to call your attention to some upcoming episodes that you're going to want to tune into. One is my very good friend, Ashley Durant, who does coaching for mostly women with chronic autoimmune disorders. And she started a business just in early 2020 as the pandemic was starting. And that will be episode 323. And it is an awesome conversation about how she got started and her passion, her incredible passion that is the basis for her business. And then on episode 324, right after Ashley, we'll have my friend Alisa Sequillian, who will be talking about her coaching that she offers for mostly Asian Pacific women and Philippinex women who have issues around eating and body image. So stay tuned for those. And there are many, many other episodes in the archives about nurse entrepreneurship and interviews with amazing nurse business owners. So on to tips six through 10. Number six is creating a structure for your business. Oh, actually, I just realized we skipped number five. So here we go. We're going to have six tips in, in the second half of the show. Number five is actually choosing a name for your business. Your business is certainly going to need a name, so think very carefully about it. The name of your company is going to be on your website, your social media platforms, your business cards, your letterhead, your checks, your credit cards, everything. And you need to do your due diligence and get your mentors to help you to make sure the name you want to use is not trademarked in the United States or in the country where you live. Definitely, you need to understand trademark law and copyright law and make sure you're not stepping on anybody's toes because, man, that can come back to bite you in the butt. So a name is important. That will also dictate most likely the uh, URL, the web address of your business. So get some help and 
Do your due diligence so you choose a name someone else is not using. Tip number six, now that we're at tip number six, sorry about that, is to create a structure for your business. It might be an LLC, an S Corp, a J Corp, a DBA, doing business as a sole proprietorship. This is not my area of expertise by any <laughs> means. So go to your local SCORE organization at SCORE.org or find other reliable sources for how to create your business structure. Tip number seven, this is another area where I am not strong, is finances. Once you've created a business and whether it's an LLC or not, you need to figure out where you're going to do your banking, who checks are going to be made out to, are you going to be doing it as the business or as you as an individual. You need to keep track of the money in and out of your business. And again, not my strong suit. So definitely get financial advice from a smart person who knows what they're doing so that you set it up well from the beginning. I have learned the hard way. Don't learn the hard way. Learn the smart way by talking to smart people about money and finances. Okay? You heard it here first. Tip number eight is to create your web presence. You know, once you have your business name and you have the concept and you're creating the languaging for how you're going to talk about it, you have the business structure, the financial structure, all that stuff. You've bought a domain name or several domain names that will be your web address. Like I use nursekeith.com, for instance. You're going to need a web presence. Even if you're opening a brick and mortar practice somewhere, you need a website. So you may want to design and build a website yourself. I don't recommend it unless it's something you truly want to do. I recommend doing stuff that you're good at and hiring out for the other things. I have great web designers and I can refer you to them if you like. I'm happy to use web designers and social media people and other contractors and people who I hire for various purposes because that leaves me time to work on my business and in my business. If they can help me with all this like gobbledygook that I just can't quite figure out myself, I have more time for writing and coaching and all, doing all the things that help support my business like creating this podcast. So if you have the wherewithal to build your own website, go for it. But if you can't be bothered or you don't have the time or energy, invest the money in someone to build your website. And also, you're going to need social media. So you may need to hire a virtual assistant to help you hang your shingle out there in the social media world. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, LinkedIn, Instagram, um, etc. A lot of these social media channels, or all of them actually, take a lot of time and energy. So you're going to probably need some help to do it right. So again, spend your money wisely, figure out where you need help and hire out. I can't tell you how awesome it is to have a virtual assistant who, when I go on vacation or I'm otherwise engaged, I know he, my friend Mark, is posting stuff, making sure my blog gets noticed, making sure I'm aware that there are messages and comments on social media I need to reply to, putting my newsletter together, it's invaluable help. And I can't tell you how much peace of mind it will give you. So that reliable help is really going to be important for you. And that is tip number nine. You may need to hire all sorts of people. And when I say reliable, you need to find people who have a good track record. Like my friend Mark, who was working on my social media. We've been working together for quite some time now. My cod my cod pastor, my podcaster producer, Rob, who's probably laughing right now as he edits this episode. And I'm sure he's going to leave in me saying cod past because I've never said it before. And what I want to say about hiring reliable help is one, of course, you need to vet them and find people with good reputations, but you also need to monitor your cash flow. And that goes back to tip number seven about setting up your finances. You can't necessarily hire all the people you need all at once at the beginning because you might be running a bootstrapped organization. 
honest shoestring, to use two different shoe-related metaphors. So again, we need to play smart. We need to spend smart. We need to think smart. And Going back to those mentors, the people at score.org, a business coach, go back to those people who can help you make the prudent decisions for setting it all up. Now, this might all sound very overwhelming. However, once you get the basic structure set up, once your business is flying, once things are moving forward, you can do so much. And yes, it's a lot of work, but nursing school was a lot of work, right? Didn't you work really hard in nursing school? Would you have gone to nursing school if you'd known what hell it was going to be? Probably not. So I'm trying to give you just a little bit of advice here to set you up for success so that you know some of the things that are going to come along that you're going to need to take care of and then monitor as the months and years go by. So tip number 10, be nimble and willing to pivot. That is my final tip of tips one through 10. You need to be willing to move, to shift, to pivot, to keep your ear to the rails so or your finger in the wind to know what is going on out there. You know, sometimes you might set up a business or create a product prototype. And then you realize, oh, the market is shifting. Things are different now. I need to do this to reach my target audience, or I need to do that for my target audience, or, oh, I thought this certain type of product was important, but no, for what I want to do, I need to hire an app developer. I need to create an iPhone and Android app. So be willing to pivot, listen, We can't treat our business and all the different aspects of it as being too precious. If we get too attached, we need to be able to pivot. Like I mentioned in the first half of the show, there are new nurse career coaches emerging out there in the marketplace. And I think that's awesome. That's great. And healthy competition is a good thing. Keeps you on your toes. Now, I'm keeping my eye and meeting some of the people out there who are doing nurse career coaching. And in five years, I may have to pivot myself. This field might become a little too crowded. Some of the people who I try to reach with my products and services may not be reachable by me anymore because someone else has kind of taken over in that part of my niche. So I may need to make a little shift. And I understand that day may come. And I understand that nimbleness is paramount. And if you can be a flexible business owner, ready to roll with the changes and punches, you're going to be much better for it. So again, these 10 tips are not the be all and end all. They're just here for you to just take in, to integrate, to internalize, and then bring your questions back to me or your mentors or the people out there you turn to for guidance and advice and support. So when we bring it all back home, these are my 10 top tips. There are many, many more. It's not exhaustive. And remember, connections, people, networking, curiosity, that is what is going to get you where you need to go. And again, I can't recommend the National Nurses and Business Association more. I will have a link in the show notes. And I wish you luck in going out there and conquering, slaying what it is you really want to do out there in the world, because you know what? You can do it. Well, there you have it. Thanks for listening to this solo episode of the Nurse Keith Show. And those 10 tips will be at nursekeith.com forward slash the word episode and the number 316. I hope you feel uplifted and empowered from this episode. And I encourage you to take inspired action every day in the interest of your personal and professional satisfaction and happiness. And again, Please consider becoming a patron of the podcast over at patreon.com forward slash Nurse Keith. A $2 monthly pledge would be awesome, and you can avail yourself of some cool prizes and premiums if you choose to pledge more. I need 100 people who listen to this podcast regularly to stand up, say, I value the Nurse Keith show. Gosh, this sounds like a telethon, doesn't it? And I'm willing to pledge $2 a month for a year to support 
Keith and what he brings to the nursing community. Thanks so much for considering doing that. The Nurse Keith Show is a proud member of the Health Podcast Network, one of the largest and fastest growing collections of high quality podcasts taking on the tough topics in health and healthcare with empathy, expertise, and a commitment to excellence. Check them out at healthpodcastnetwork.com where you find The Nurse Keith Show, Amplify Nursing, Sanjay Gupta, The Mayo Clinic, The Journal of the American Medical Association, and so many more. The Nurse Keith Show is adroitly produced by Rob Johnston of 520R Podcasting. Thank you, Rob. And Mark Cappiespeason is our stalwart, as ever, stalwart social media ringmaster. I'm grateful to both Rob and Mark for keeping the wheels turning in the right direction. And I'm grateful to Rob for sometimes leaving in the little flubs that just prove that Nurse Keith is a human being like anybody else. Be well, dig deep, seek joy, keep in touch. This is Nurse Keith Singh. Adios till next time from beautiful, sunny, and windy Santa Fe, New Mexico. Thank you.